Last week, when Apollo 11 was launched on its way from Cape Kennedy, one of the uh, guests there to witness the launching was uh, former Vice President, jo uh, former President Johnson, who uh, was moved to remark after the launch that uh, he wondered why, if we can harness all this technology and put together all this effort, we can't do the same to bring peace to the world. Well, we have to uh, remind ourselves of the fact that uh, while we have done all these wondrous things in space and with our technology, we still have not been able, some way or another, to eradicate war from the face of the Earth. And there is a war underway right now, though hopefully it is in what is called a lull. Perhaps the young men who were actually doing the fighting might quarrel a bit with that uh, description of it. But nevertheless, the flight of Apollo 11 has great meaning, too, for the young men, Americans and South Vietnamese, and for that matter, North Vietnamese and BC in Vietnam. And we thought it would be interesting to see uh, how they feel about it. ABC's Kenneth Gale has this report on the reaction of American troops in the combat zone in Vietnam. It was early in the morning, a full two hours before sunup here in Vietnam, when man reached the moon. Out in Tay Ninh province, troops have been tense for several nights now, waiting for the heavy fighting to begin again. For that reason, most of those who did not have to be awake slept through the moon landing, knowing they will not sleep when the fighting begins. Artillerymen were awake, firing wherever the enemy might be. Because of the clouds, the only moon to be seen over Tay Ninh was an artificial one, flares to keep the enemy from moving in darkness. In a bunker, a night radio watch followed the moon landing, with an ear tuned to other radios that might call them to action at any time. Artillery Fire Direction Control Office here at Fire Support Base Buell. Lieutenant, do you think the moonshot was worth it, all this? Well, it depends what you mean by, by worth it. From a technological point of view, it was a wonderful accomplishment. Being a romanticist that I am, I feel that men should more or less try to square away their affairs here in this world before they go exploring stars and planets. This is being the first step into the universe. Well, it, it, was, it was the accomplishment itself was, was worth it. But I think that people are putting too much stock in the space travel when they should try to square away what's wrong with this world right here. Luckily, the night was relatively quiet at this artillery base in Tain Inn. The men here actually more concerned with the immediate threat to their own lives to give much thought to the dramatic challenge facing the men on the moon. Kenneth Gale, ABC News, at an artillery base in Tain Inn, South Vietnam. Back in ABC Space Headquarters in New York, I'm Frank Reynolds with Jules Bergman. We are less than 15 minutes away now from the uh, time when the rendezvous will be accomplished and the docking actually will take place when... Uh, Command module, Columbia, will be joined together now with the Lem, Eagle, Collins, Aldrin, Armstrong. I'm so tired that I'm having difficulty remembering those names now. You know. I'm sure you are. Just kind of, kind of slip away. We'll all be uh, back together again in the same space capsule. We have an animation to uh, show you just precisely how that uh, is going to be done, how this 
docking maneuver will be uh, carried out. We're 13 right. minutes away. And they'll be coming out from behind the moon shortly. They should be fairly close together, Frank, when we arrive back in uh, the radio signal area. And this is the way it'll look from inside Eagle, the lunar module. These are the rendezvous maneuvers that led up to the final rendezvous in the docking, the Eagle lunar module's ascent stage with the two astronauts aboard, moving in close as it will be in a few minutes, braking gates being applied, firing its reaction control system thrusters to slow down so it doesn't come in too fast to the Eagle to the Columbia command module. Then when they're close by, rotating itself around into the docking attitude, a very difficult maneuver. The astronauts, uh, Aldrin and Armstrong, looking out their top rendezvous maneuver, as we see in this animation, and as they move in with about 30 feet or so, then astronaut Michael Collins inside the Columbia command module takes the controls and fires up his reaction control system thrusters and moves in very slowly because he has better view of the target docking uh, adapter. And the probe and drogues lock, meet, and the uh, latches close, and they are docked. Shortly thereafter, they will transfer from the lunar module back into the Columbia command module. Eagle, the lunar module, will be cast off into lunar orbit Eventually, it will impact the moon months from now, perhaps. Uh, the three astronauts will eat and rest in, inside the Columbia command module. Not yet clear as whether Neil Armstrong, the spacecraft commander, will elect to extend their time, their lo lunar orbit stay time, if you will, for an additional eight hours or 12 hours for a rest cycle, or whether he will stick to the original flight plan, which calls for a trans-Earth injection at about 1 a.m. Uh, the Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow morning to head them back on the two-and-a-half-day journey toward Earth which will climax successfully, we trust, in a splash down on the Pacific about 12.52 p.m. That time subject to a few minutes revision, 12.52 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time this Thursday. We'll go to Mission Control now for air-to-ground signals. This is Lunar Revolution number 27 for Columbia. Terry White and Mission Control are still waiting for confirmation of acquisition of radio signal. As the clock ticks down, the AOS. there's the signal Lem has been acquired. Eagle. And we should have Columbia acquired shortly. One, of their, one or both of their antennas are out of position, and Houston apparently doesn't want to bother them with it while they're in this critical docking phase. Okay, we're all yours. Columbia. Okay. That's it. Armstrong giving Collins a signal to move in for the docking. And from every sign, they are already docked. Collins, from the brief exchange we heard, is going through his post-docking checklist, pressurizing the command module's cabin up to 5.5 psi, disabling the two thruster jets you heard him mention, B3 and B4, in preparation for the... Yeah, that was sure busy there for a couple of seconds. 
And they are, Doc, some small problems in attitude control being discussed by Mike Collins and Spacecraft Commander Armstrong. Right, I got a horrible squeal. Yeah, I agree with that, but we hear you okay. Over. 